Alta Company presents Diet Challenge is a reality project the participants of which were diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. They challenged themselves to reach their set goals despite their serious condition. Tell us what happened this week, what's going on? New horizons opened up to me. Alexei said, you were at first and now... I am just walking around with a smile on my face, I don't know why. This is a six-month transformation process. The first three months are under the supervision of an endocrinologist, a trainer and a psychologist. Let's go take a look at what's happening over there. The cockroach has four legs, four arms and he's dancing. Stage 2. Three months of independent work without the experts. What do you think about Anastasia's breakfast? I'm hungry. No, really. I'm super hungry. Real stories. Real victories. Reality project about the lives of people with diabetes. Every day is a step towards self-change. To control your diabetes. We challenged ourselves, have you? Today is the ninth weekly group meeting at the cottage. Psychological training awaits the diet challenge participants. The name? Managing Emotions. You saw the name. You probably have some expectations and wishes. In order for me to properly adjust to them, I would like to hear about them from you now. Managing emotions uh, makes me feel like somebody is controlling or manipulating someone. Well, now the internet is a huge part of our lives. This type of communication is different from real life. I find the topic interesting. I would also like to talk about conflicts. Yes, uh, conflicts are really interesting. How to manage a person's negative energy when it is someone close to you. How not to let the negative energy affect you. Limit it. Yes, limiting it. Where does this negativity come from? Who experiences it? Or is it just our interpretation of it? You are experiencing this negativity. That's just your reaction. Look, the goal I would suggest for you today is raising the level of the individual competence in the area of self-organization and self-control. Whose emotions are we talking about here? Ours. Ours towards others, towards anything and everything. And to be frank, you are the master of these emotions. Not always, of course, but really you should be. That's what today is going to be about. How much of a master can you be over your emotions? It is mostly all about self-management, self-discipline, control over your resources and your life, the understanding of what instruments and resources are available, what are the opportunities. Each of the diet challenge participants challenged themselves. Some want to lose weight, some to gain it, improve their compensation, to be more disciplined, self-sufficient, open and happy. However, not everybody succeeded in getting into the transformation process on their first try. Because people with diabetes problems often enough have some sort of a splinter in their head, yeah? The first thing that the participants concentrated on were emotions. Happiness, anger, delight, fear, admiration, resent. It turns out these emotions can also be managed. It's important to not confuse management with suppression and control. I'm trying to work with it because I think it's not the emotions that are bad, it's stress that is bad. Each of the diet challenge participants knows from their own experience that stress or any other strong emotional outbursts affect the hormonal background and in turn the blood glucose level. Is it possible for a person with diabetes to have a profession directly involved with the high level of emotions? Uh, let's say a director, an artist or a singer. Is that possible? When they go on stage and nervous? Yes. They should know their own personal traits and inject accordingly, I guess. 
My sugar rises when I'm nervous too, but I'm scared to increase my insulin intake. That's why I lower my sugar afterwards. I usually have meetings during lunchtime. I try to eat as much as I can at breakfast to keep my sugar higher and not to go into hypo during the meetings. When you're at an important meeting and you're having a hypo, you have to concentrate on the people, make decisions, negotiate, while well, all you can think of is that you need to drink something sweet or to eat something. That's really bad. One of Dina Dominova's goals on the project was to stop hiding the fact that she has diabetes. For example, if she needs to, she should take out her pump, measure her blood sugar despite that people are watching her. Nothing should get in the way of compensation. That's Dina's aspiration. There's no goal to tell everybody that you have diabetes. The goal is when faced with a specific question, to not be afraid to answer it. That's all. Despite the fact that the topic of diabetes is becoming more popular at this time, the more people get diagnosed, and unfortunately many people are getting diagnosed, the more information is becoming available to the public. There are still people that have no idea, and their reaction could be inadequate. Just yesterday I was thinking of when the project first started, as it used to scare me and how I could care less now. Yes, people stare. Yes, people ask dumb questions. One of the funniest things I heard recently was when I was told to fill my pump with alcohol. I just say, okay. It's, it's something that you should not pay attention to, even if it's not as funny as they might think. For me, it is best to just ignore them. You can have a relationship with yourself. You can have relationships with others and different groups. There are many. Financial, religious, aesthetic, moral. The participants were asked to think about themselves, their diabetes and society. What is happening in those relationships? I feel like saying that there are a bunch of stupid people in our society. It would be nicer if there were fewer of them. However, speaking objectively, society and I get along well in general, despite my peculiarities. It's crucial to explain to people what diabetes is, that it's not contagious or dangerous. I hope that I will feel more comfortable in society after being on the project. Prior to this, I was more vain, with very high self-esteem. I felt that I was special. Now, I am much calmer when reacting to what is happening in society and have an easier time fitting in. The main thing is that those relationships that are in our lives can either make us stronger or weaker. It's very simple. In fact, just like with anything else, it's important to identify those relationships and what they mean to you. If you take five to ten minutes in a group right now to think of your life and make a map, relationship networks and how everyone is connected, to have a look at the number, who are those people or groups of people that make you stronger and those relationships that make you weaker. Add a plus or a minus accordingly. Plus for those who make you stronger and uplift you. Minus for those that bring you down. I suggest you not only do this here during training. You should use it as a tool to remind yourself of your current situation perhaps with a set goal and opportunity to multiply those particular relationships that make you stronger. In this exercise, project psychologist Vasily Golubev used one of the forms of narrative practice by including external witnesses in the therapeutic conversation. The participants will not only discuss their concerns with the experts, but also among each other. What a nightmare! <laughs> we'll definitely discuss the nightmares. An interesting regularity occurs when discussing common themes and topics with another person. Because they're different from you. 
They think in a different way, according to their personality and their own life experiences, with their own point of view. That person will always ask those questions that you will not ask yourself, because they're different from you. In that sense, this type of work is very interesting, because you have your own way of thinking, your own thought patterns. The other person will always show you the other side of the coin, at least a little bit. That is the point of such work. So, what did you want to talk about? There are a few ex-people in my life that brought me down. Ex-colleagues, ex-professor, ex-friend. It seemed to me that those people were emotionally draining me. I'm left with a couple of friends that keep complaining, but do nothing about it. Okay, the bell has rung. Wrap it up. Share your feelings about this type of a workout. I don't know. It provides structure. Have you ever done something like this? Some have and some have not. Then you think if this person is an energy vampire, why is he or she still in your life? Why did this person end up on the list? They're still around and influence my life. You start thinking why it's happening. You visualize it and arrive at different thoughts. I got a question. Would it be beneficial to try this with a husband? Of course it would. Nura Sharikova set a goal for herself to live hypo-free. The only thing that darkens her relationship with her diabetes. You should not lose your drive because of diabetes. You can live a happy life, start a family, travel, work. However, in order not to lose that drive, you have to take care of yourself. There's an old saying, which I find to be very true. When it is worth it, you find the how. Perhaps at this time, you do not know the how. But if you need it, you will find a way. That is all. Just do it. Simply do it. Give it a try. My goal is to be completely sure of my future. To be certain that I know everything there is to know of my health. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rank your self-control? <laughs> First at the beginning of the project, and now. At the beginning of the project, I would say 1. Now it's at 9. Wow! Eight or nine. That's the spirit of a warrior. Discipline. Order. Yes. That's already pro level. I wouldn't say pro. There's no limit to perfection. To be honest, I was lazy. Very lazy. The next question that was asked of the participants was short and to the point. What are you unsatisfied with? Well, I'm not really happy about the fact that my disability status was taken away. I was on disability since childhood. Ten years later, it was taken away. I was told that I was no longer eligible. Of course, we're not disabled on a psychological level, but physically, this is a very serious autoimmune disease. Insulin issues often arise. You get used to one insulin brand, and then all of a sudden you get, we don't carry it anymore. They give you something else. You have no idea how you react to the new stuff. On top of that, you'll need time for your body to adjust to it. You can't go anywhere, not a diner, nor the canteen. They can't provide you with simple information in regards to the amount of carbohydrates. How do you count your insulin then? Of course there are questions. Of course there are issues. However, I'm really glad that the government is beginning to play their part, specifically the free installations of insulin pumps by quotas. It's a huge leap forward. This was unheard of just five years ago, to think that the pumps would be handed out for free. I don't remember hearing about free consumables. Diabetes is a very expensive condition right now. After hearing from the participants, Vasily Golubov suggested to use a very common tool of practical psychology – thought visualization. It's believed that this tool, when properly executed, can help a person to deal with their problems, situations, 
issues and difficult questions. So, you ask yourself a question. What is happening? What am I unsatisfied with? A certain thing happens, and you describe it in a way. This and the other happens. You analyze. Okay, this is my whole life. Where can I fit this situation? Here it is. I think I can place it here. It is a type of a mental map, but you build it in the physical world. Mental maps, one of thought visualization techniques, a tool for analyzing and controlling thought. Sometimes they're referred to as thought maps. What did we do? We created a space of variance. Could we have built this variance space while being here? No, because we're right here. We need to leave the situation and we get an opportunity to analyze it. And we can explore not only in thought, but we can try to live it. Here will be so. Get up. Look at it from here. To arrive here, what steps must I take? Change the position, physically, right in the material world. Are you saying that in reality we know of all situations? Of course. These are ways to overcome barriers. This is the practice of internal work, the practice of work with active imagination, since those ways that you're used to do not work. They don't. They do not generate. You need other ways. For example, different methods of active imagination work. This is one. You set up a camera, you imagine a person that you trust. This could be a hypothetical person. And you tell them everything that is bothering you. After, you watch the video and analyze it. You can watch it alone without getting too much into it. How about something like this? One spouse gets a camera and the other sets up another camera. Yes, discuss. You can do that too. Okay, so what did we do? We covered the strong side. And one of the strong sides is the ability to exit a situation and to analyze it. Moving on. After a tragedy occurred in my life, I was feeling down, but I need to live for my child and support myself. And when you have an opportunity to talk about this with people that fully understand you, when they take action and provide support, you feel strong and you look differently at everything, that everything will be okay. After two months on the project, Lena began to notice the first changes. After changing her long-acting insulin, she got rid of the nightly hypos. Her well-being and mood improved. To be honest, I can't recognize myself. I watched the beginning of filming, uh, casting, and I can't recognize myself. I see that I have changed. I'm completely different in both psychological and physical ways. And with regard to diabetes, I began to train more, I began to run. I met an amazing person that got me to run every other day in the park. At first it was six kilometers and now I'm doing eight. I feel much better. Next question. What else must you develop in yourself? More development? <laughs> okay, do you get the general idea? The point is very simple in my opinion. Everything is up to you. That's it. And that of what's between here and here. Now, practice of active imagination. Everybody take a piece of paper. We will draw our resource potential. Each one of you will draw their own resource potential in some sort of a form, any form that comes to your mind. Your goal is to look at the floor, at the ceiling, just look around and imagine what your resource potential could look like. It is your vision, it is your image. Once you have an image, you have to give it a name. 
And after you will need to come up with a storyline for your newly named image. What we are doing right now is called storytelling. Storytelling is an English term. Solving conflicts, improving relationships, memory, motivation. Is only the tip of the iceberg of that that could be accomplished with storytelling, according to many psychologists. And paired with visualization could gain a powerful tool to manage anything. It's very simple in terms of the resource potential. I believe you are your own resource potential. That's exactly why my image characterizes my life up to this point. Like birth, childhood, youth, and respectively the current moment. In terms of the story, there is no ending, because there is no end. Everything just continues according to my script. I will allow myself to respond. If you place an imaginary equal sign next to Dina, I would continue this with the following phrase. I am. That's possible. Throughout history, human birth has always been the highest good, the highest achievement. And in that sense, look how interesting this is. Despite what Dina is saying now, in this now, there's everything. Okay, I named my resource potential the world's library. If any of you have been to Minsk, Belarus, you might remember the huge glass globe with many, many thousands of books. Millions of books. That's where all the world's knowledge is kept. Knowledge, experience, history of relationships. So everything that might happen has already been written down in history. So seek and you will find. I don't know, guys. Non-stop archetypes. Resource potential. It's a girl. She looks like an eye because I feel like that the eye is the most beautiful part of a human. Her eyelashes used to be stuck together. She had bruises under her eyes. She had on an ugly dress. The dress made her look fat. And she always felt that she was special. Then she accidentally realized that there were others, other special ones. But to become special like that, one must walk the path. She began to study, filling herself with knowledge, began to think, what's wrong, what is happening? She becomes different. realizes that these unsightly eyes want to be just like her. She can lead by example. This path that she had to walk on her own was very difficult. She understands now that she can help these eyes to cover the path faster. By her example, because only by her own example she can help people. Can we name your resource potential Pretty Eyes? Yes, worked. I drew a rocket because my potential is always going up. I try to find something new, something interesting and beneficial than what was before and use it to the fullest. 
wherein the name We the Children of the World showed that there is nothing more important than the world and love in this life. I drew Earth here. Of course, I can't do anything for the whole world. But I would like to. This is a tree. A tree of the world that connects Earth and the universe. This is a very powerful resource. This is what connects Earth with the heavens. This is a true resource. You can do a lot with such a powerful resource. If you want something, it will happen. Who's next? Okay, I'll go. This is a satisfied dinosaur. He walks through the park to go to work. And his satisfaction comes from him walking in the park to work. There are a bunch of trees in the park. He really likes the color green. And he is also very green himself. He has a suitcase full of work papers and all of his business is in order. When you worked on your image, when you thought about it, what feeling did you get? Summer, fresh air, euphoria? Yes, the wish to walk. This aspect of resourcefulness is quite serious. This dinosaur Satisfied or not, is still a dinosaur. <laughs> the fact that he's happy is wonderful. This is a king lion, not the Lion King. He is called the King Lion because there's the kingdom, there's the king, there's the king's wife, and there's the king's advisor, the King Lion. He provides comfort and a pleasant existence for the king and the queen. He solves their problems. He gathers strength and regulates conflicts in the kingdom. For me, it is a symbol of solutions to the problems which my family or I might face. A discovery of a very hidden royal position. Very cool. In everything. Now, look at what I'll suggest for you. Firstly, I suggest all of you. Take your images with you and make sure you see it when you're at home. So they can look at it for a while and remember that that is the reflection of your resource potential. This reflection, in reality, has very deep roots. It is a way of reminding yourself of the issues that matter. You can use this image to reach those depths within yourself where all of your resources lie. Then continue to move through your life. I'm asking you to give some feedback. Something important happened, maybe not important. Interesting or not, whether it was beneficial or not, some sort of a review that you decide you would like to share. I would like to thank all of you for being here with me. There are no coincidences. Everything in life happens for a reason. I just found out I was pregnant. No surprise. Everybody remembers what I said. I planned my pregnancy. I planned to figure myself out before this moment would arrive. I'm so happy that you are here with me. Congratulations! That is so cool! This is Diet Challenge, where every participant challenges him or herself. I challenge my laziness, my indecisiveness, to be stronger, to be better, to open something new for myself. See you in a week.